Hiya, it's Linda Lee, and welcome back to my channel and another eco dye um, reveal. I have two little batches that I did here. Um, both of them have a little bit of paper, some a little fabrics. Uh, one was on the stovetop, and the other one was in the oven at the same time. So I'm going to show you both of them at the same time. But let me get down to the papers and we'll look at the fabrics after. So this here is the stuff that was on the stovetop in my more traditional pot. So this is one that I did with coffee in my aluminum pot that actually sat in there for a couple few days. So leftover coffee in the aluminum pot from one day to the next day to the next day and then on a Thursday I actually did this so this is like three or four days worth of leftover coffee it had a little bit of white vinegar in the water and the paper and leaves were sprayed with alum in between so we'll start with the littles the four by four and a half by sixes so this is one full sheet of my paper that's cut down uh, this is a mixed media paper, so it's about 70 pounds, uh, a little bit heavier than regular copy paper might be, or drying paper, and they are two-sided. So these here were done mostly with uh, coleus and the hibiscus leaves. I do have a couple in here that are a different leaf. Uh, the plant I'm unfamiliar with it did come off a of vine though, so I just have to kind of look it up, I guess. So, and this is that leaf. Now, some of you might recognize the leaf just by, uh, you know, the pattern. If you know what it is, let me know. I haven't looked it up yet. I don't know why I keep forgetting and then I remember, but I'm not, you know, at that moment ready to do so. So anyway, Oh, here's another one. Aren't they cool? They do grow on a vine, and the bigger leaves are at the base of the vine, and as the vine grows, you know, it has uh, almost like uh, steps. So it's like smaller, 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 smaller as the, the vine proceeds. So if you know what it is, let me know. Because I don't. I don't know here oh here's one more this one was done with a different plant that I've never really used before as well um, it didn't really give me any real leaf impressions but I love the texture that it provided just by um, the ridges of the different leaves because it was one stalk with a bunch of of straight leaves on it so it was really cool but I, I didn't have a lot of this. I didn't really grab a lot to play with. This is a piece of drawing paper. It is 70 pounds in weight. And I think I only had really one piece of this one. Um, I was just using up some scraps. I have some cards. This is that spiky leaf one that gave us that great te or texture. On this one uh, if just in combination with this particular cardstock it was more of a, a manila type color uh, it came through a lot more yellow and green than um, happened on this paper so isn't that cool though so I have a couple of these little cards and I have some envelopes. Let's actually look at the big pieces of paper before we get to the envelopes. So here's what I mean by the, the frames. So it gives us a little picture within a picture almost. And these are traditionally folded when I bundle them. 
So this here just had one leaf in the middle. I didn't put a lot of extra stuff inside. So this is the front of the leaf and this is the back of the leaf. Now you might think it goes the other way around, but it's usually the bottom of the leaf that I get the most result from uh, as far as like coloring and texture. This is about the same. These were folded in with each other. A lot of single leaf impressions in this particular batch. Um, I just, that's not typically something that I do. Usually there's a little bit more going on than a single leaf when I'm layering. Uh, but I just wanted to give it a try. And here is a little bit more of that spiky leaf. And now this here is the result that I love because again like I said earlier it's a little more muddled and a little less identifiable as being what it is so that different artwork can be layered up on top of it but again this was the coffee that was left in the aluminum pot I didn't put anything additional in the water other than um, a little bit of white vinegar and I sprayed in between each layering of, of materials with uh, alum, which is something I didn't do in the other batch, which I will show you. So this here is that wild ivy plant that, that I harvest from time to time. I don't like to take too much of this because it does have a tendency to die once I cut it. So these inside pages. I did leave a few of these blank this time. Isn't that gorgeous? Those are my, I swear the, if I could do a whole batch with just the muddled, um, which I almost did with the other one that I'm going to show you, uh, cause I didn't use alum, so I didn't get as much definition, but here is So you can see where an envelope was. Individual leaves inside. Intentionally left a blank. The external leaves. And a couple more. Here's that other leaf that I didn't get. Um, well, it's more muted, I think, because it didn't throw any color. Isn't that cool? I think I had like a random uh, chrysanthemum or two in this batch. It's been it's been probably a couple weeks since I did this batch. I just haven't got had the opportunity to do a reveal for you. And then this here more of that other plant. This actually turned out really cool because I had torn one of the leaves so what I did is I took a scissor and cut it in half and just tucked it up into the seam and folded it and it looks like it's a whole leaf. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And that is the larger pieces so this is 8 by 12. And I have some envelopes to go with it that were also in the pot. Um, I have a couple that came unglued. Look at the inside of this. Isn't this cool? What I think I would do with these is actually use them backwards. So this would be the envelope. Now you can still kind of see the leaf impression but see how it's so much more muddled you still can see the edge of the leaf so it still has the shape but look at the side isn't that so pretty or you can have the bold print on the outside you are the artist you do whatever you choose and then this one also came unglued 
so you can kind of see the muddled inside and the more drastic in color and impression on the outside. These are larger envelopes. These did not come unglued. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? And the ivy always gives me a great result. I just really need to try and figure out how to harvest it or propagate it so that I can plant more. That way you know, at least I'm replacing what I'm taking. But it is growing wild, and in some areas it kind of overtakes. So, large envelope. Here is another one of uh, those uh, leaves that I don't know what they are, but they did really great in the pot. Here is the front, here is the back, one with the ivy, isn't that beautiful? One of these times I'm going to harvest uh, a larger amount and do just one batch with this stuff. Isn't that so pretty? That'd be gorgeous in the fall. Of course, here we it pretty much grows all year round because again I'm in Naples, Florida, and today the heat index was 102, and it was like 90 degrees about an hour ago. I don't know what it is now. I think it's like about two o'clock in the afternoon. But and my last envelope from this particular batch. See here is what I more typically do, have multiple leaves on each little surface. But I just did single leaves this time, something a little different, changing it up. Now, what I did do in this next batch, I didn't use any alum whatsoever. I only used um, instant coffee and I put it in the oven. This batch cooked for, mm, I want to say, an hour and a half. And I didn't get really much impression at all. Um, I want to say that typically I do, even without using alum. But this time, uh, it, I didn't. You just never know what's going to happen. But I'll tell you what. I love them all the same, if not more, because look what it gave me, a more muddled result, which is something that I really like. So what I feel with pages that are like this, it's easier to use in a journal that's going to be written. So you can write over top of this. Nobody is going to feel bad about writing on a coffee stained piece of paper that has a little bit of a leaf impression. Um, we don't have a whole, you know, something more substantial to try and write over. So I love this stuff. I was just, I was, I got to say, I was surprised when I, um, you know, took it all apart and pulled the leaves out that it didn't have more, but I'm so happy. Because I have some awesome papers to use uh, without feeling bad about it and without having to be strategic about inserting you know coffee stained paper I've got some gorgeous paper that has the more natural muddling from the plants this one almost <laughs> but still and then now these are the drying paper the 70 pound weight. This here is a uh, 98 pound mixed media paper. So you can kind of see I did have leaves in there. This different kind of paper so it did take a little bit differently. When I unwrapped it 
this here looked almost white so it was very cool like it didn't even saturate even though this was on the bottom it looked like this paper didn't saturate all the way with all the coffee that was in the in the um, little roasting pan it almost looks like watercolor it's so pretty one more piece of paper this was one great big leaf uh, again I don't know what kind of leaf it was it's one of the ferns that grow in the craw of one of our our palm trees I don't even know what kind of palm trees you know what I need to research these plants better for you um, next time I'll I'll take pictures of the trees and identify them for you so those are the papers now the fabrics the fabrics had almost the same type of result as all the papers did so the ones that were in the pot were stronger and more defined and the ones that were in the roasting pan um, not as much which again I'm really happy with so it I it just depends on the project you know what you want to do so this here is a long piece of cotton fabric all right it is a bed sheet here is a finished edge of it folded in half and I layered up the plants kind of accordion style so let me put this back together for a real second did I do it right I don't think so anyway I had plants and then plants plant plant there we go plants plants see there's another one of those little flowers and then this here was one of those uh, a, another different kind of plant again I'm not sure what it was and then these plants here and this was the back and this was the front of the same leaves again the back is usually what gives me the stronger result and then this was just folded here and another leaf on top so the full size of this piece of fabric is it's 10 inches by the width of I think it's like a twin a twin size sheet so let me kind of fold it in half and then I'll fold it again and measure it so it's folded 15 so it's about 60 maybe two inches in full length so yeah that's a bed a, a twin size bed sheet so the width of the sheet but yeah this was a great result I'm always happy with the fabrics they always turn out really great they look really cool when they're wet too but it doesn't stay like that these are just um, strips that I tore when I was tearing the sheet. This originally was, I think, about one inch wide, but it curled up and I just kind of let it be so that it could be, you know, kind of like a string. But I just threw them in the pot. This one here, same thing. I just threw them in the water so that they were the same color and they coordinated so they can be utilized with that larger piece um, I have a two inch strip doesn't have any leaf impressions on it just you know the, the same coloring and then I also have a three inch strip that I can use for you know whatever uh, that also coordinate with this so I could easily sell this kind of like a kit you know for your creating pleasure I don't know 
how or when or if I'm really going to sell this stuff. Um, well, I sell it all, but at the same time, I haven't really made kits yet. Uh, but I think that is something that I'm going to do because I'm starting to accumulate it again, um, which is nice because for a little bit I was completely sold out. But now this stuff here that I'm going to show you now is what came out of the roasting pan. So this is the roasting pan that I used all the leaves, the instant coffee, um, and no alum. So this is part of a bed skirt. And when it was white, this little stitching here was pink. And I was kind of hoping that the stitching would take um, a different color than the the fabric of course um, but it didn't really take much of anything it's kind of blah so I mean it's still gorgeous in its own right but I was just expecting a little bit more so I think what I'll end up doing with this one unless somebody says hey no no you know I am going to just put this in another one of my next eco dye batches so this piece here is the only one that's really got a little bit of life to it out of this piece. So this side, well, actually, you know what? If this were an album or a journal cover, this side would look great on the cover. You know what I mean? And this piece here would look great on the inside. So there's always different ways that you can utilize um, without it having to be the same. So this other piece is kind of similar. This one was like a scrap piece. Uh, I think this one's a little bigger. Oh, it looks like it's about the same. But here we got some life on this side. So a lot of different um, texture to, you know, where it took the coffee. And then this side, not so much. So, gorgeous. So only if somebody expresses interest in this will I sell it as it is. So maybe I'll even let them both go together. So between the two pieces, um, you know, you can make a couple of different projects that maybe we'll coordinate but let me measure it for you. So this one is 10 inches, which is what I try to do roughly is about 10 inches because most of our journals are about eight, um, you know, because a, a width of a folded piece of copy paper. And then this here, this one is 31 inches. And then the back one is 17 and 17. So 34, which is about the width of a twin sheet bed if, or twin bed sheet if you put them together. So, so that was that strange result. Cool, but strange. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I still love it. I was just expecting something different, which is my own fault because I've learned through doing this to kind of be open-minded with whatever result I get. Um, but I don't know. I just had big expectations for this, especially because of there's so much detail in the fabric. But that's that. And on to the next. So these are, again, from the Instant Coffee roasting pan that was in the oven. So this here did have leaves in it, but I did not use any alum. And then the other side. So this has still got some great interest, a lot of variation in color. So at least um, contrast wise, there's a little bit more going on in this because we got the dark pieces, we got the lighter areas. 
we've got embroidery, we've got flat, we've got the, the lace on the outer side. So this would make a really cool cover. Even if the book cover was, you know, inside, because this is rounded and then this just kind of flapped, you know, the extra pieces. That would be really cool. Um, to Let me see if I got a little book. So yeah, let's just pretend that it would be the cover for this. See, and then this would just be soft and loose. You would be able to have pages that were, you know, bigger than the book because this overextends anyways. So that would really be cool. A nice small hard cover with pages that are both taller and wider than the book and then the cover that just kind of envelops it all. That would be really cool. <laughs> all right. So that's one piece that was in there. Little bits of uh, coffee grounds or something. <laughs> uh, it's actually debris, I think, from the leaves. And then this is one of the little lace doilies. You've seen this in other little um, projects that I've, or batches that I've done. So a leaf impression. It only looks like on one side, really. Otherwise, it's just, you know, different saturations of the, the impression. And then this here is a valence that I have. I've shown you this when I first got it. It was one of my Goodwill finds for, like, I don't know, I think it was like $3, $2.99. And I had plants all in here too, but again, without using any alum. So you can see very lightly the impressions of the leaves. Am I in frame? Here, let's see. Pull it up a little bit maybe. Inside, just muddled. But it's got great variation in color. And then the other side. So you can kind of see where it was folded. And this was just pushed into the roasting pan. The roasting pan itself is, I think, uh, 12 by 14 or something like that in size. The valence, let's measure this puppy. The valence is 14 inches wide if you're counting, you know, the peaks of this. So the just fabric part, if you were looking at just the fabric part of it, is uh, about eight and a half inches. And then we have this extra detail on the edge, the scallop. And then if we fold it back in half, and then in half again, make it a little easier to measure, it's uh, 14 and a quarter times four is 56, like 57 inches, the full length of the valence. And you can kind of see here where the curtain rod would go in. So I've been tempted just to put this on the curtain that I have above my window, but I have another find for that. So that's that piece. And then this, <laughs> is a piece of kite string, uh, just some yardage. I have no idea how long it is, um, but I stained it in the same water just to match and coordinate. So I had another piece of, um, you know, a different, why can't I find my words today? A different, um, you know, so it's not flat. What's that word? <laughs> I don't know. So this here is a bed sheet, just a strip. Again, I had some leaves in it in the roasting pan. 
um, that we don't really see too much of. But we've got some real cool color and variation. And it's stiff now, you know what I mean? It's got a little bit of texture to it. Let's see. And the other side, there's another leaf. These were big leaves. I don't know if you can really see it on camera. It doesn't show too much by my eye, but on camera sometimes things appear a little different. So you might be able to see, you know, the leaf a little better. Um, but this piece, let me measure times four. Let's see. All right, so let's see. This here is 16. So 3264 is its length. And widthwise, let's see, this way, a little more than 10 inches. So that's it. That's everything crazy as it was and you know I don't know why I didn't use any alum in this batch for whatever reason I just wasn't thinking and I put this one together before I did the one in the pot and uh, when I was done I thought oh man I didn't use any alum <laughs> but we have a awesome muddled uh, result that can be used in a multitude of projects. So I'm very, I'm actually very happy with it and hope you enjoyed this result. And I will talk to you all again very soon and have a wonderful afternoon. Until the next video, bye-bye, take care.